Bill Miner was born in Bowling Green, Kentucky, 1846. His real name was Urza Allen Miller. However, he disliked this name and went by the name of William or Bill. His background was fairly ordinary with his mother being a school teacher and his father a mining engineer. His youth is largely unknown, but we can be certain that he was an excellent horseman with a keen taste for adventure. As a teenager, he worked as a mail courier in New Mexico for General Wright during the Apache War. His task involved crossing dangerous terrains to deliver letters. This job was risky and often put him in life-threatening situations. For this, he was paid a nice sum of cash, around $20 for each letter. Using his riding skills, he safely delivered dozens of letters, earning himself more money than he was used to. He went out spending his new earned cash on fine dining, clothes, and tried acting as an upper class gent. He knew the money he had would soon run out, so to support his new lifestyle, he turned to crime. He was only a teenager when his criminal career began. He started off by stealing horses. Being so familiar with these animals, it came naturally to him. After this, his activities increased, rowing merchants and breaking into people's homes in the state of California. Although this earned him a decent sum of money, Miner wanted more. To fulfill his desires, he turned to robbing stagecoaches. With the help of accomplices, most of Miner's robberies were successful, resulting in them taking away cash, bonds, gold dust, and other goods, often totaling thousands of dollars. Miner was unlike any other robber. He would frequently apologize for the inconvenience and would always be polite speaking in a soft tone to those affected by the robbery. This unusual form of talking to his victims made him be known as the Gentleman Bandit. During one of his robberies of a stagecoach, he asked the passengers to step outside the coach. Gun in hand, he said the words, hands up. Although we can't be certain, supposedly it's the first time the phrase was used. To this day, Miner is credited for coining the phrase. He was eventually arrested in 1866 at the age of 20. Despite having committed numerous thefts by that time, he was only charged with two counts of robbery. He was sentenced to four years behind bars in California's San Quentin State Prison. After leaving prison, he carried on robbing stagecoaches to maintain a high quality lifestyle, allowing him to mix with the upper classes. However, this was not to last as soon after he was arrested, sentenced, and put back in prison. From 1866 to 1901, Miner escaped prison five times and was released only twice. He spent over 29 of the next 35 years behind bars. In 1880, during one of the brief spells that he was free, he teamed up with Bill Leroy. Their goal was to rob a stagecoach. Miner's speciality. However, this attempt was devastating for the pair. After having completed the robbery, word spread about the pair's actions. A mob quickly formed and the hunt for the two men began. Bill Leroy was caught and lynched. Miner almost faced the same fate, but his smart decision making allowed him to escape the angry mob. His actions went unnoticed by the authorities. But not long after, he was caught for another robbery in 1881 and was sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. In 1901, he was finally released. After being in prison for such a long time, the American West was very different. Bandits like himself were on the decline. He briefly worked as an honest farmer laborer, but soon he realized that this was not the life he wanted and he quickly returned to crime. With stagecoaches becoming less common for transporting high value goods, Miner had to become accustomed to the strategies used to rob trains. Miner's first attempt at robbing a train was a failure, so he tried again on the 23rd of September, 1903. His target was the express train in Oregon. 
Miner and his two henchmen made a complete mess of the job. Not having taken the necessary precautions, one of his companions was wounded and another killed. Miner was the only one who made out unharmed and of course he was empty handed. Miner left Oregon and started a life in British Columbia in Canada. He lived as a ranch owner using the alias George Edwards. He became well known within the local community and was liked by many. Miner quickly became unentertained of his cattle trader lifestyle and planned a new train robbery. By 1904, he had new accomplices, Louis Cockum and Thomas Dunn. With a solid plan in place, they believed the robbery could net them a nice sum of money. On the 10th of September, the group stopped the train at Silverdale in British Columbia, about 35 kilometers east of Vancouver. Once the Canadian Pacific Railway's Transcontinental Express No. 1 came to a complete stop, the group boarded the train and stole around $7,000 worth of gold dust, $1,000 in currency and over $50,000 in US bonds. They had successfully executed Canada's first ever train robbery. The operation was very smooth, everything going according to plan. They had their boat ready and crossed the Fraser River. On the other side, their horses were waiting for them. They rode upstream and then went their separate ways. The Canadian Pacific Railway, along with the federal and provincial government, offered a large sum of $11,500 to anyone who could catch the robbers. However, the police had little knowledge of the criminals behind the incident. The next morning, police searched the area looking for any signs of the robbers. Meanwhile, Miner, posing as George Edwards, was having breakfast in Chilliwack, talking to detectives about the news from last night. For the next 18 months, Miner lived peacefully as George Edwards, a kind old man, popular within the local community. No one ever suspected that he was actually the notorious gentleman bandit. Miner had heard news of a train carrying huge amounts of cash and gold which was headed to San Francisco and would pass nearby. Seeing this as a golden opportunity, he rounded up his three-man team and prepared a strategy to rob the train as he had done many times before. On the 8th of May, 1906, Miner, Dunn and Cockholm held up the Canadian Pacific Railway's Transcontinental Express number 97 at Duck Station, a place now called Mont Creek near Camp Loops. The robbery was a complete disaster. After boarding, they soon realized that they had stopped the wrong train. Nothing of value was found. They only managed to get $15 and some liver pills that Miner picked up. Things went from bad to worse for the bandits when they noticed their horses had gone missing. They were forced to escape on foot and went into hiding. The local authorities were determined to catch the bandits, believing it was the same group that had committed the robbery of 1904. Compensation of $15,000 was offered to anyone who could catch the three men. With the provincial and federal government, Canadian Pacific Railway detectives and local cowboys, as well as others working together, it became and still is the largest manhunt in the history of British Columbia. The bandits managed to stay hidden for almost a week, but on the 14th of May, they were found at a camp near Douglas Lake. Miner and Cockom surrendered without a fight, but Dunn made a run for it. Quickly, an officer pulled out his gun and shot him in the leg. The outlaws were taken to Cam Loops, and on the 1st of June, they were tried and convicted. As Miner was the group leader, he was given a life sentence which he would serve in British Columbia's penitentiary in New Westminster. Hundreds of supporters from the local town came to protest, believing they had the wrong man. They refused to believe that George Edwards, a kind, popular gentleman, could possibly be the most outwanted law in the West. A year later, 
on the 8th of August 1907, Miner escaped from prison. The police patrolled the Vancouver area, searching for him, but Miner had outsmarted them and he fled to Colorado. From 1907 to 1911, he lived a peaceful life as he had done before, but once his money ran out in 1911, he carried on his career as a bandit. With a small group by his side, he committed Georgia's first train robbery, but within days, they were caught. Minor was sentenced to 20 years in prison in the state's penitentiary. Again, Minor did what he did best and escaped. However, within a year, he was put back in prison. Restless, he escaped again in 1912. He made his way to a swamp where he hid in an old boxcar. Despite the hidden location, he was caught and taken back to prison for the final time. He died in Georgia State Penitentiary of Gastritis on the 2nd of September 1913, a result of the dirty water he drank while trying to escape. His epitaph reads, and rightfully so, Bill Miner, last of the old time outlaws. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and um, I'll be posting more content very soon. And thanks.